In this video we're going to look at countably infinite sample spaces and also uncountably infinite sample spaces and how to calculate probabilities for those two types of spaces. For infinite sample spaces, uh, countably infinite sample spaces, um, again we've already talked about what countably infinite sample spaces are but we've got elements that we can count so they're discrete elements in the sample space and there's an infinite number of them so infinitely countable sample space so for each one of those items that are in the sample space we've got like a1 a2 a3 and so on they each have a probability of occurring and that probability of course is greater than zero and also if we sum up all of those probabilities we should get one so let's look at uh, geometric series because we'll probably be doing a lot of adding of, of those uh, probabilities. The general form I, I've got shown over here where we just are summing up of a, a, a finite series of elements where our index starts at M and goes to N. The series deals with the whatever this R value is raised to some power and so the power of course in this case will go from m to n. If we sum up this finite series we end up with r to the m that starts that's because of the first first index here the first starting element and minus r to the n plus one so notice that we have n here but in the in the closed form solution over here we have n plus one on the top. So we have r to the m minus r to the n plus 1 and then all of that's over 1 minus r. Now that's the general form of just summing a series of elements. Now for an infinite series or a geometric series, this one we're showing starts at k equals 0 and ending of course going to infinity. Now to find this, this solution we'll let we'll use a limit function. We'll let the upper limit be n and we'll let that n go into infinity so that'll give us this this part of the summation and we of course have r to the k there. We can then substitute those two limits 0 and n into our equa equation that we had up here. So m will be 0 and n we'll, we'll just have n and then we're going to take the limit so in this case we have well r to the 0 of course is just 1 and then we have minus r to the n plus 1 and then all of that's over 1 minus r. Now let's just look at this this one term here this r to the n plus 1 term as we take the limit as n goes to infinity that's the only thing that has the n in it. If we look at that n going to infinity this this um, this multiplication here, or this factor, will go to zero if that r value is less than one, or the magnitude of that r value is less than one. And so, <clears throat> you've uh, probably studied limits before and know that as we take that, as that, if that value is less than one, as we keep multiplying that value more and more, um, it eventually converges to zero. So let's go back to our original summation that we were trying to solve where we go from k equals 0 to infinity. So in this case we are letting that n go to infinity and so let's look back up here. So this term over here will go to 0 in this summation and so we'll just end up with 1 on the top and so this will be 1 over 1 minus r if that r value is less than 1. All right, let's look at one more summation in this case we're letting k go from 1 to infinity. We've got a multiplication of some constant out front, a, and we're multiplying r to the k. Again we're going to let the use this as a limit so n will go to infinity. We're going to pull out that a from that summation and we're going to let our limits be 1 and n. So we have, we'll let that be now we'll, we'll substitute in for that finite sum. R, at, on the top we have r to the 1 minus r to the n plus 1. 
And again, as we let that n go to infinity, this term will go to zero if r is less than one. And so if that goes to zero, then on the top we'll just have this r. And so the final solution will be a times r over one minus r. And that'll be true if r, the magnitude of r is less than one. All right, so let's look at an example. This example, we're gonna roll a die and we're gonna keep rolling it until a six occurs. Okay, so the outcome will be the number of rolls. So if we roll it once and we get a six, then that is one roll or the outcome will be one. Um, if we roll it, you know, a five and then a six, then the outcome will be two. We had to roll two times before we got a six. All right, so the question is, what is the probability of rolling a rolling 10 or more times or getting in other words a 10 as an outcome or or bigger all right so let's break this down so here's uh, some example rolls suppose we rolled a four then we rolled a two and then we rolled a six well we would stop there because we've we've reached or we've rolled a six and the number of rolls would be three so the outcome would be three and here's another example we roll a one then a three then a five then a six and so we stop there at four, four times. So our sample space will just be the number of rolls possible. One, of course, being the minimum, and then two, three, and so on. We could go on to infinity. All right, so let's look at the probability of each one of those occurring. What's the probability of rolling one time? Well, that's just the probability of getting a six on the first roll. Well, we know that we're gonna, you know, to the probability of rolling one time and getting a six is one out of six because each of those those values, one through six, are equally probable. Let's look now at what's the probability of getting a two. Probability of getting a two is the probability of rolling on the first roll something other than a six, in other words, one through five, and then rolling a six on the second roll. Well, the probability of rolling a one through five is going to be 5, 6, and the probability of rolling a 6 following that will be 1, 6. And so we just multiply those probabilities. Now for rolling a 3, again we're going to have rolling 1 through 5 on the first roll, 1 through 5 on the second roll, and then rolling a 6. And so the probability would be 5, 6 times 5, 6 times 1, 6. So you can see where this is going. In general, the probability of getting some number you know, one through whatever, so whatever that number happens to be, will be equal to one sixth, because we notice that we've got one sixth on all of these, will be one sixth times five sixths raised to the power of i minus one. So we don't want it on the first one, it should, we should get a one for that. So that means we have to have an i minus one. So when i is equal to one, this will be zero, and so this will just, this whole term will just become a one. And so if we want to get rid of this i, this minus one term, we can factor that out and have one six times five six to the i times five six to the minus one. And minus one, of course, we just flip those and then we can do some, some canceling. That six cancels that six and we're left with one fifth times five six to the i. So for any value i, the probability will be one fifth times 5, 6 to the i. All right, so let's check to make sure that we did this right. We should sum them all up and be able to get 1. So if I put in the sum from 1 to infinity of our probability, then we should get 1. We know that that'll be equal to, we'll pull out that 1 fifth. So this is just like the, the series that we just got done doing. The result will be 1 fifth, that a term, times r over 1 minus r. So the r is 5, 6, so we got 5, 6 on the top, minus 1, minus 5, 6. We can do some rearranging. You can look at that, see what we do. And then after cancellation, we end up with 1. So that works out. So at least we got, we got that part right. So you're pretty sure that we got the right probability for that. So what's the probability of getting a 10 or greater? It's just the sum from 10 to infinity of that value. And we have one fifth times, this would be r to the 10 
over 1 minus r. And so I plugged in that 5, 6 to the 10 over 1 minus 5, 6. And we end up with 0.1938. So that'll be the probability of getting a 10 or greater, which actually seems kind of large for the probability of getting rolling 10 values 10 times or more. All right, let's look now at uncountably infinite spaces. Uncountably infinite, of course, we're dealing with things that we can't count. And there'll usually be some type of geometric measure like area or uh, length or volume. And for, for now, we're going to assume that there's a uniform probability of all of them occurring. So let's look at this first example here. I'll, I'll abbreviate the, the what's written here. Suppose we have outcomes that are possible between A and B on the real line. So those are all the possible values. And we want to know what's the probability that the outcome will be between C and D. The way we find that probability, we, if they're all equally probable, is just by looking at the length from A to B um, or the length from C to D over the length from A to B. And so that probability will just be D minus C over B minus A. Just this length over the shorter, or the shorter length over the longer length. And that's the basic um, idea between all or for all these types of problems when they're all equally probable. So if we look at a dartboard, suppose we have a dartboard with a radius of 1. So here's our dartboard, circle of radius 1. And we throw a dart at it randomly. We're not really trying to aim or anything. We just throw it. And it hits the board. We want to know what's the probability that it will land inside this circle in the middle that has a radius of 1 half. Since we're dealing with areas, we're gonna, our probability will be the area of the middle one, the probability that, in other words, that it'll land inside this part, divided by the probability of the whole thing, which will be A1. So our probability will be the area A2 divided by the area A1. For area, when we know the radius, it's pi r squared. So we'll have pi times 1 half squared for that smaller circle and pi times 1 squared for the larger circle. And working that out, we get 1 quarter. So the probability that if we just threw it randomly at that dartboard that it would land within that smaller circle will just be 1 quarter.